Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Lauren, if you're new here. If you're not new, say hi to Ritzy, my co-host. I mean, you can say hi if you're new too. But today we are gonna be talking about the second update to my project pan. Now, this project is a six month project and this is the second month down. Basically what I've done is I have an Excel spreadsheet in front of me where I've kept track of how many times I've used each of the products in my project pan. We are gonna see certain similarities in how much we used products last month compared to this month, which is the end of February. So let's take into consideration that February is a slightly shorter month. So give me a little bit of credit there. But this month was interesting. There were a couple products that I was like, I'm gonna finish for sure. Did not finish them. And I'm always so stunned at how many uses I can get out of certain items. Now, in case you don't know, the reason that I am embarking on this project pan is to get more use and more appreciation out of some of the items in my collection. I have a massive collection and I just feel some things go neglected, some things I keep a hold of even though I don't know if I like it or not. And uh, I don't wanna do that, you know? I want to really enjoy and get some value out of the products that I have. That doesn't necessarily mean finish them because that's hard, <laughs> like, especially for eyeshadows, the chances of me hitting pan on an eyeshadow is very slim. It's possible, I've done it before, but it's happened like once. But other products like primers, I tend to go through those pretty fast. I can go through foundations if I really put my mind to it. But again, that's not necessarily the objective to finish things. I just really want to understand my products better, understand how I feel about them, and really just put them to use because some of them are very expensive. So I am going to go through my fancy Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna tell you how many times I used each of these products in the month of February and compare them to how many times I used them in the month of January. Then we're gonna total up the total amount of uses for all these products and uh, if I did better or worse than last month. And again, February is shorter. So give me a little, a little, bit, of, a little bit of wiggle room, just a little bit. Uh, but let's start uh, with primers, my favorite. Now I say primers are my favorite because I feel like that's one product that I actually consistently use up and go through. So that's why it's one of my favorite categories. And I definitely believe in doing a face primer before putting on foundation. I just feel like it really gives your face and your foundation a good base. You know, it smooths out some imperfections the good primers do. And it gives your foundation something to adhere to. But let's get into this. Um, okay, the first primer, look, I thought it would be done by now. This is from Guerlain. This is the Essence de Clat Allure Pure Radiance Concentrate with Pure Gold. I didn't even pay money for this. I got this like free with a gift with purchase or something like that. But I wanted to use it up because one, it's a good primer and two, it's Guerlain and I love Guerlain. I used this 11 times in the month of February, six times in the month of January and it is still kicking. It's still got product in there. So even though I'm really fingers crossed, I can finish this in March because I think we're almost there. It's just, I don't use a lot of product on my face. Foundation primers, I normally use pump, pump and a half. That's all I use and that's why it takes me so long to go through some of these products because even using it 11 times in the month of February, it still has product left. The next primer in my project pan is from Freck and this is their Rich Bitch Protect and Prime Serum. And this is, I think I did like a short or something with this or tried it on in like new makeup a while ago, but it's super sticky. It's got the weirdest texture. It is very, very sticky, but it's an excellent primer. I really like this. So I used it eight times in the month of February, six times in the month of January. So, so far with primers, we're doing better than we did in January. So yay, there's hope for me still. Um, but yeah, I still really enjoy this primer. These primers were the only ones I brought with me to Disney World when I went and they were perfect. I didn't need anything else. <sighs> now we get into the disappointment. Okay, this is the Stila One Step Skin Tone Correcting and Brightening Primer. I did not use it at all in the month of January and I continue to trend with nothing. Trend as nothing. I didn't use it in February. <laughs> I wanted to, but I was so bent on finishing one of these primers. 
Uh, I mean, the problem with the Freck one though is that we can't really see inside it, so I'm not sure how much is left. I don't really wanna open it up and expose the product to the air, but um, this one I just did not use. I was focused on those two. I'm, I'm really hoping I can finish the Guerlain so I can start working on the Stila. But there's something that like kind of grosses me out about how this primer looks. <laughs> so it just looks really funky. And I at first I thought it was cool. That's why I got it. And now it scares me. Okay, we've got some foundation. The first one is from Makeup Forever. This is their HD Skin uh HD skin something. I have the mini one, so it doesn't have the complete name. This is the HD skin. This is the older one. This isn't the glowy one that just came out. I have mine in 1N06. Okay, you can kind of see because I took a little spatula and spatula the inside. It is almost done. We are so close to finishing this. So we use this 11 times in February, 10 times in January, so that's one more. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure we're close to the end because I used it today and it kind of didn't pump as well as it has been. So I think we're close. I need to get another little spatula in there and try to get everything off the sides. But my God, like it's just, it's so messy when I do that. Up next in foundations, we have the Dior Forever Natural Nude in 1.5N. I used this three times in February, six times in January. So downward trending there. And you can kind of see there's like, we got, we've got like a dip in it. We do. The reason that this is in my project pan is it's actually a fantastic foundation, but it is their older formulation. Um, you can kind of see like the letters are wearing off of it. It's still good. It still smells fine, but it's very, it's Dior. It's expensive. I would like to get as much use out of this as possible. Dior foundations are ones that I actually typically use up because I love them so much. I think they're fantastic, but it's old. I need to use it more in March to really, really start making an impact in it because it's it's just getting older every day, you know? And the Makeup Forever is almost done, so I feel like we can focus on the Dior. <sighs> but we have another another disappointment. Uh, this is the Patrick Ta Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo in Fair 4. Yes, it's disgusting. The packaging is just means you can see every single fingerprint in it. Now I've talked about this before. I actually do like the foundation. It's a cream foundation, but it's not a foundation that I reach for at all in the winter. It's just a little too thick. And I probably should have thought of that before putting this in my project pan for this particular six month period, because it's just been so cold that I haven't wanted to reach into this. It's just too thick for what I like in the winter. I need stuff that's more hydrating. So. This has not been touched yet in the duration of my project pan. I'm hoping in March we start seeing a little bit warmer weather and I can pull this out again. Really my goal is to pan the foundation. It is because I don't think there's a lot in here to be honest. Uh, and for this price point, you think there'd be more. I don't think there is. Uh, but the powder was garbage. <laughs> I did not like the powder. So I don't really care about the powder. I do want to use it just so that I can use it, but I'm not going to use it unless I use the foundation. So. Maybe that's part of the problem. Maybe I need to pull it out, you know? I don't know. I don't know. I just, I used it a handful of times when I first purchased this and I just really didn't like it. So maybe I, I, I do need to bring it out and try it with different foundations. Try it with the Dior, maybe that'll be a little bit better. But I'm just, I'm waiting for the weather to warm up so I can use this product. We do have an illuminator type product. I don't know what their names really are. I like to call them illuminators, but these are the, Ease Drop Lids from Fenty Beauty, and I have mine in the color Pink Pearl. And when I first used this product, I was kind of new to the point of this product, right? Because I was like, I don't really see anything. I don't understand. And now the way that I use it is I like using products like this in drier foundations. I actually really like mixing this in with the Makeup Forever one um, because this is more of a matte foundation and it leads a little bit of hydration to it. Um, which makes it just glide on my skin a little bit better. And you do see, I, I think, a little bit of glowiness, but it's so subtle. I don't think if you wanted something noticeable, this would not be the product for you. But I really do like how it feels when I mix it in with a drier foundation. And again, I do think it makes my skin a little bit glowier, but it, it's very subtle. So it's something that I could probably tell that you might not be able to tell. Like I've mixed it in with my foundation today, but 
I'm also having a good skin day, so you know, who knows what it is that's lending that glow to my face, but um, I do like the product, I really do. And this was in my project pan because I did not know how I felt about it. And I'm glad to say that now I know what I like to use it for, which is again, mixed it in with foundation. How many times can I say that? Um, but unfortunately I didn't use it very much in February. I only really used it twice. And in January I used it four times. So we're seeing a little bit of a downward decline. So I've already used this a couple times in March. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're back up, we're, we're going back up. But um, it's, I forgot about it a little bit, you know? So uh, I just need to use this one more. We have the Charlotte Tilbury Concealer up next. This is in the color One Fair. And this is their correcting concealer. It's very tiny. It's probably one of the reasons why I put it in my project pan, because I'm like, I could hit bottom on that, right? Well, I haven't yet. And I used it seven times in the month of February compared to twice in the month of January. So, you know, there's still hope for me, you know, like I'm still, I, there's a dent, there's a dip. If you can see that, it's a small dip, but again, this is a product that I go in with a light hand, you know, I don't need a lot. I tend to just put it like a little bit under my eyes. It is a bit thicker, so I don't like to put a lot of it on because I don't want it to seep into the lines in my face. Um, but going in with a light hand means it goes on really nice. It, it's perfect. And I don't want to tempt fate by going in with, you know, heavier layers. Um, it is a good product though. I do like it. I do like using it underneath my eyes. And yeah, it's, it's, I'm working on it. We're trying. We have another Makeup Forever product in my project pan. Uh, okay. This is the HD Skin Twist and Light Setting Powder in the color One Light. Okay, we've talked about it before. I'll go over it again. It's a little bit of a gimmick. And of course, I love a good gimmick. So I fell for it. But it's got these colors in it that when you mix them, because the whole thing is like you turn the bottom, it dispenses each color into the middle and you mix it up. Well, it just kind of turns out a little bit gray. It's a little bit gray and it's got some shimmer in here as well. Uh, so it's not my favorite product. It's not my favorite color for my skin tone. I am not quite sure. I don't know. I want to like it more than I do. I just, uh, it's a little disappointing because it's fun and it looks a little bit like the Givenchy, right? With the four quadrants that you mix together. The Givenchy is superior to this product. It is. And I actually only use this once in the month of February compared to three times in January. I do want to pull it out more so I can get more use out of it, but it's, mm, it's hard. I don't think it's a product that I'll ever be able to finish. And I thought I would be able to initially because there's not that much powder in the little areas, but mm, I don't love it enough to be pulling it out and using it consistently. And it's kind of time consuming, you know, like the other powder that we have in the project pan is my Chanel Beige setting powder or Chanel Le Beige setting powder in the color light. I want to say yes, light. And this one is just so easy to use. And granted, it's easy to use because I took out the plastic compartment that was inside so I can make it more accessible. But this one, you know, I take a big brush, I just swirl it in and I just put it in my T-zone, which is typically the only place I use any, I really use setting powder. And uh, it's, it's great. Now this product I use six times in the month of February compared to 10 times the month of January. So again, we're seeing a little bit of a decline there, but um, this product is fantastic. It's got a very subtle shimmer as well sometimes. Maybe I made that up. No, I'm not seeing it. Okay, might've made that up. And the reason that I hadn't been reaching for this one is that it looks really dark and I thought like it wasn't my color. It actually is. It just looks really dark in the pan. I don't know why, but it does not go on with this like dark orangey color, which is how I see it. It looks a little bit orangey. That's not how it looks on my face. So yay for that. Also, this is the older version. So I have linked all the products that are still available down below, but um, this one I linked the newer updated version because I wouldn't be surprised if it's still a great powder. It is Chanel. This project pan has been interesting in terms of bronzers because I picked two where I didn't really know how, how I felt about them. And now I kind of don't like either of them, but my feelings really keep flip-flopping around. So the first one that I picked is the Huda Beauty Glowish Bronzer. This is in the color two medium. 
Okay, so I used it one, once in February, eight times in January, so I need to step up my game. But it's, um, this is in the color medium and I still have a hard time seeing it on my face. And I don't know what it is about it, but I just feel like I have to really, really dig a brush in there to pick up the product and I still don't see it. And I think it hard pans as well. So I keep having to go in with my finger and kind of like scrubbing the top off, which is gross to me. Like I, I hate products that hard pan because there's no reason to, you know, like they're, they, I don't know. It's just annoying, you know, like I don't want to go when I have to scrape off the top each time, which I've had to do with this once already. And I think it's probably about time I do that again, but it just, it's a weird color. Like I can't see it. <laughs> I can't see it. I don't know what it is. I just don't feel like it does a whole lot for my face. Um, some people love it and that's why I included it in my project pan. So many people speak highly of this product. I do not understand it. I do not get it. It, it bugs me. It says soft radiance. I don't feel like there's a whole lot of radiance in there. Uh, but that's just my opinion. But I'm obviously struggling with this one a little bit. Same with the next one. This is the Westman Atelier Contour Stick in Biscuit. Biscuit is supposed to be the perfect color for me. And it looks like it would be. And you know what? I hated this product in January. I'm slowly liking it a little bit more. Now I used it five times in the month of February, three times in the month of January. So we see an improvement there. My problem with it, especially in January, was that I felt like regardless of the way that I tried to apply it, I could not see the product. Like it just disappeared on my face. And that was really frustrating to me. Um, I do have a brush that I use. It's a rainbow one from Tarte. I've had it for like ever. It's fantastic with cream products. It's the only brush that I feel like doesn't make it blend into oblivion like you can still see it after you blend it out and maybe this is just too subtle of a color for me to really appreciate it maybe it's better on lighter skin but i feel like i'm pretty pale and i just cannot really <sighs> this <sighs> on one hand i like it because it does something similar to the makeup forever or no makeup by mario like skin enhancer bronzer that they have it's my favorite and it does make your skin look healthy but it just doesn't look super bronzed <laughs> and sometimes i want it to be more bronze <laughs> especially in winter when i am as pale as i can be i want a little bit of color and this does not lend a little bit of color but i'm still working on it i'm still playing with it again in february i have been appreciating it a little bit more for what it is than i did in january where i just straight up hated it so we're getting better i will say i had issues reaching for blush this month i did in january as well i this has not been a great couple months in terms of blush i've been reaching for some others in my collection not the ones in my project panda as much so let's talk about them first up we have the mac glow play blush in cheeky devil this is a fantastic color this product is a little bit older which is why it's in my project pan i wanted to use it more it is a little difficult to use you need to use the right brush with it because it is this bouncy texture it's really interesting but once you get it on your face it's very pretty i didn't use it in february i used it twice in january did not use it in february um, again, blush was not my strong point this month, that's for sure. Same with the Pat McGrath Skin Finish, ugh, Skin Fetish Blush in Paradise Glow. This I put in my product pan because I, I don't know if this color works for me. So I wanted to play around with it to see if I can make it work. Now, I have not played around with it. That's all I can say. I didn't use it in February. I didn't use it in January. This needs to be a real push for me so I can use it in March because I need to see some of these products get more use. That's why they're in my project pan. And it's ridiculous that I put them in here and then didn't use them. So we will be pulling this out in March. The one saving grace is the Kaleidos blush that I keep forgetting the name of, but it is in this bright pink color. The reason I don't know the name is because they don't have the name on the packaging. Also, you'll see this yellow tape on everything. That's so I can keep track of what's in my project pan. Um, I actually used this twice and I didn't use it at all in January. So a slight uptick there. And I brought it with me to Disney World and that's the only way I managed to use it twice because I think it was the only blush that I used in Disney World. And it's a really pretty bright pink color. 
I just don't find myself using it a lot. So, hmm. Guess we know where I uh, kind of failed at this month, that's for sure. Though I guess I didn't do a whole lot better in the highlighter category either. Ooh, okay, well, calling myself out, I need to. So first up, we have the Kevin Aquan Glass Glow Highlighter in Pixie Dream. I used this twice in January, didn't use it in February. I was so stoked when I got this product because it looks beautiful. It's got these beautiful colors in it. and. You know, I like to use the word ethereal a lot. I feel like this really gives you an ethereal glow. The problem that I have with this product doesn't dry down. So it is sticky on your face. And if you're like me with long hair that you leave down a lot of the time, your hair gets stuck in it. That's not a good product. It's really not. And it doesn't matter what kind of setting spray I put on top of it. It just remains sticky and it's not great to use. So, mm. I don't know. It's it's so pretty and that's why it's been hard for me to let it go. Plus like I've spent my money on all this stuff, right? Um and I want to get use out of it. Like th this is was an expensive product and it just I don't know. I need to work with it more. Maybe if I mix it into the foundation, I feel like that would just make my entire face sticky and that scares me. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do about this one. One highlighter that I do tend to use a lot is the ColourPop Pressed Powder Highlighter in Cold One. This is just an icy white highlighter. It's fantastic. It's great if you like a more cool toned highlighter, which I prefer. It's fantastic. So yeah, this one's great. I used this one twice in February, twice in January. Highlighter is a product where I, I have so many and I like a variety of highlighters. I like to use a different one like every day. So at least I use this one twice. And then another fail, my God, okay. <sighs> I started off so strong, but this is the Norns Mesmerizer Web of Destiny by Odin's Eye. It's so pretty. I finally convinced myself to use it. I used it once in January. I initially just didn't want to mess up how pretty the imprint was. And I was like, that's ridiculous. We're going to use it. So I did in January, not in February. So this one is also a little bit trickier to use. It's very hard packed in there. So you have to go in with a stiff brush to pick up any of the product or use your finger, which like, I don't mind doing. But it also has like pretty chunky gold reflex in there. So it's, you know, I still love it quite a bit. It's gorgeous. I just need to use it more, right? I need to see if I really need it in my collection. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because I haven't been using it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. We have one product that I may be getting rid of soon. <laughs> oh, this is from Pat McGrath. This is the Bridgerton um, collab they did. This is called Blushing Delights. Uh, it was so expensive and it's just cardboard. It looks like this. And I have come to realize I don't love the highlighter there on top. It's got some chunky gold reflex. I really only like the middle two blushes. The one on the bottom is just too deep for me. Um, and while the, the these blushes are gorgeous, I just don't know if it's worth keeping this chunky, chunky product that I did not use in February. It's just, it's hard to reach for. I did use it in March already, so at least we've got one on the board there, but it's just so chunky. I really wanna see if I can somehow remove them from the packaging and transplant them somewhere where it's gonna be easier for me to access them, because my God, it's just so annoying. I picked three single shadows from one of my favorite indie brands called Firene. It's very deep cut indie, if you will. Now, let's see, first one, Chanel, oh, kitty. The first one, let some of this cat hair settle, uh, is in the color Shenanigans. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's like this deep bronzy color. I didn't use this one. And I used this one once last month. This one did not get used this month. Every time I reached for it, I ended up picking something else. It is a very dark bronze, so it's gonna look better when I mix it in with something else. Uh, which I just haven't done lately. But let's see, Digital Fairy, I did use. So this is Digital Fairy, this bright aqua color. I used it once in February, once in January, so we're pretty even there. But then Brocade, which is probably one of the most gorgeous colors 
that I own. It's hard to explain. It's got like a little bit of a blue shift to it, like browny, bluey, greeny. It's just so pretty. I used this twice compared to once last month. So we're doing better with this one at least. So pretty. Another area that I have just been having some issues with, at least in February, uh, I'm doing better in March, but that is my eyeshadow palettes that I picked for this project pan. So the first one, which is the Lime Crime Venus XL 2, I just haven't been using. I used it, let me see, once last month, but I didn't use it this month. And I just love the color story. But I think a lot of these uh, shadows just are much lighter than they appear in the pan. And I like something a little bit darker and deeper. Also, the browns are a little more warm leaning. I like browns that are a little more cool leaning. So I just haven't been reaching for it. Oof. I need to though, because I need to know if I want to keep it or de-stash it. And I just don't know. Uh, the other eyeshadow palette that I picked is actually on my eyes today, so I've been using it. Not in February, didn't use it in February. Didn't, I believe, didn't use it. Yeah, didn't use it in January either. But that is the Haunted Pumpkin palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. It is a beautiful palette, but I was just, I don't know, haven't been reaching for palettes. I've been reaching for single shadows a lot lately just because I've been going into work a lot and it's just easy having a one and done shadow. But I reached for this yesterday, I reached for it today. I actually got a compliment from someone at Starbucks on the pretty greens that I used. I used the two corner ones yesterday. So I think people are beginning to miss some color. I think clean girl aesthetic is leaving bright colorful makeup is coming back in yes it is my time people um but today i just used rotten and pumpkin possession um and i i really like the look that i came up with so uh that's inspired me to reach for this palette more and then we do have a couple lip products now one of them just like last time i did a project pan one of them has gone AWOL. I don't know where it is. It, it was my MAC uh, Glow Play Up. I used it three times. I brought it with me to Disney World and it might have stayed at Disney World. I don't know. I will keep looking because I'm not sure. It might be around here somewhere, but I just cannot find it. And I've been using that one because I like it. It was just a nude neutral color. Um, but the other two products that I have, the first one is from Guerlain. This is the Kiss Kiss in the color 574 which is pinky orange, just says orange. So it's so cute, it's got like a little heart. This is actually what's on my lips today because I don't know if I like it. I didn't use it in February, apparently just in March, and I just don't know if I like this particular orange color. Oh my God, I'm sorry, cat hair. The particular orange color on me. And when I first put it on today, I was like, no, I, do I don't like that. And then I let it sit for a couple minutes and I was like, that's not bad. So I don't know how I feel. I'm very confused on this particular product. Um, so I, again, this is why it's in my project pants that I can figure out if I want to use it. Like, how do I feel about it? Um, and the other product is actually, it's kind of funny because I brought one of these with me to Disney World, but not the one in my project pan. And this is the Fenty Beauty Poutsicle. And the one in my project pan is in the color my type which is a bright pink and I just I didn't use it I used the more darker purpley-ish one uh, when I was at Disney World and I love it because it does stain your lips it's a great product but I just haven't been reaching for bright pink lately so this one has been neglected as well so clearly as you can tell there are certain things that I'm flourishing at primers foundation and certain things that have been getting abandoned is basically everything else so March we've got a lot of things to work on and I really want to focus on wearing more blush wearing more of these highlighters so that again I can get a better idea of if I like them if they need to go in my next declutter I don't know we will see um, but totaling up how many times I used each of the products Total amount of times in February is 65 compared to 74 uses in January. So we saw a little bit of a dip. Again, this was month was a few days shorter. So yes, I'm blaming that. Um, but you know, again, there's stuff that we need to work on. The reason that this stuff has been put into my project pan is that I need to figure out if I like it, if I want to keep it. 
and I'm not going to be able to decide that if I don't use it. So whew, we are going to continue. We are going to hopefully finish a couple of these products in March. If we do, I might switch a couple out just to get some new stuff in here, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't feel like I'm doing a fantastic job with most of these. So I don't know if I want to just keep using what I have in here or if I've just decided and it's just not the product for me, like the Huda bronzer, which honestly might have to go. It might have to go. We'll see. But yeah, this has been the second update. Thanks for sticking in there with me. Um, I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.